Uh, I think I have an entry point into the box from the outside. However, I gotta go to Home Depot. One inch diameter, and I'm gonna cut a hole. I'm gonna drill a hole into the side of my house. So this will go inside of it. It's a lot better than trying to run the cable through the wall upstairs and then through all that insulation and all that other stuff because yeah, that would just be terrible. Which I don't know why this makes me nervous. It's not the biggest hole I've cut inside of my house before, but you know, it's just, once you do a thing, it's like there's, there's not technically no going back because you can fix it, but it's just not the same. You know what I mean? Which if I'm gonna match it up as close as possible, it's gonna be that one right there. That is actually kind of a perfect fit. Before I make this permanent modification to my home with a one and a half inch hole saw, I just want to say that I'm about to eyeball the shit out of this because I have not measured anything. I just took a picture and I think right about here is where I needed to go. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna go with right there. Leather seal right there, and then behind that's the OSB. Got to take a second, take that out. That way I can go to the next step. I think that, that fits plenty of space. I think we're good. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, that, that went in, and that's. That's insulation. It was a pretty tight squeeze. Uh, couldn't really get good footage of it, but what I'm gonna do now, I cut a hole in the insulation paper and then dug a hole through the insulation. I got my little stick, poked through it. Now I'm gonna stick some of that through that to give me a conduit. Fun fact, I actually, I actually chopped the tip of my thumb off with this thing. About a quarter, not a quarter, it's like an eighth inch and it grew back just fine. And there you go. Look at that. I think that's probably pretty good length. Maybe pull it out like an inch, but there you go. Got a little conduit and then I can bypass the insulation and all that. Check that out. And I'll put some sealant in there, some foam, some foam and then some sealant. Expanding foam. So far looking kind of interesting. Looks like it works. You know, I thought a knockout was just supposed to knock out, but this one is just solid. All it is is just indented, so you have to like drill it out. And I don't have, you know, the appropriate size metal drill. So I used the size that I had and I've been grinding it with, dr with a Dremel. This is, this is really dumb. I wish I would have known I needed to do this. It fits and I sanded it or grinded it, whatever, to be like smooth. So yeah, there we go. Got that mounted up. Added a little bit too much cock too early, but uh, I'm backed out a little bit, so I gotta still put that on. Uh, have that ran down, leveled out. Now I'm about to fill this with some of this. Running out of daylight, but I got to the point now where I can run the wire. That's what it's looking like so far. Now this is 6 4 wire. Push it down this hole. Like so, and then pull it through, and then push it through. Look at that though. Boom. Actually, let's make sure through all my things, I say it's straight. Yeah, straight-ish. There you go. Not so straight. Now that it's ran in, I uh, vacuumed a little bit. 
I need to knock out the last access hole I have right there. And then I got something like that to go right here, which, you know, probably a little overkill, especially because this one, I didn't do anything. Um, actually, I may, hold on. <laughs> so I bought these specifically because I did not buy them last time. So I bought a whole freaking pack of them just for this one run. There you go. That was $5.99. So after setting this up and, you know, because I'm totally not making this up as I go along, I've decided I still have to connect the 100 amp wire that I got from this panel to this panel. And it's gonna go up probably, right? It's gonna go somewhere like right there or something. And I wanna use that for the 100 amp. So I do have one more knockout right there that I can use to run this one. And then that'll go down into that, which, this is my range. I'm gonna reassign that over here. Really just plug in another 50 and then just rerun the wire. When I went to Lowe's Depot, I was told that uh, when I have a square D panel and I installed this 60 right there, which does not match all the other ones, that that was apparently a big no-no. So I ended up getting another 60 amp with the square D uh, just so everything matches. This 100 amp is going to be probably somewhere right there. And then this 50 amp is also going to be somewhere right there. You know, I have no idea why when I installed this uh, Emporia thing, which by the way is still amazing, I have no idea why I crossed over like that. I have no idea why I did that. Like why did, why? I need to undo that. What was I thinking? I haven't got that 60 swapped out yet, but I did get this rewired to the new 6.4 that I just ran. Uh, I think everything is good to go. Red, black, everything, everything looks ready. Got it ran up through there. This is that one goes up into there. And yeah, so the way the generator thing works is that if it has power, the little thing outside will turn green. So I'm gonna flip this on, one, make sure it doesn't explode. Two, I'm gonna go see if the light's on. Uh... Okay, let's go check outside. All right, here we go. You can see it there, it's green, lit up. That means it has power. Hypothetically, if this was hooked up to a generator and the generator was working, that would be green. But because it's running through the thing, it's green now. So, hey, works. This last part, I was saving this for last. I wanted to make sure it was last before I kind of put things a little bit together. I'm actually not gonna clean it up because I still have other lines to run. Anyways, this last part was kind of the most important part because it's like a, a true battle test. I wanna go make sure everything doesn't turn off. My DVR, uh, my Unraid server, all the monitors, everything that I have powered currently with that 60 amp sub panel right there. Now that is wired to my battery. The battery is wired to plug to outlets and then everything is plugged into the outlets. So power goes out, battery kicks in, inverter and all that other stuff. It powers everything. Hopefully it's like 10 or 12 kilowatt hours, uh, hopefully for a very long time. Plenty of time for me to switch it over. However, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a bigger load on it. So I just wanna make sure, hey, whenever I turn that off, just to make sure and double check, even though I've checked this before, is everything gonna stay on? So let's do that. Just give an idea, right? Got the, this is what I got going on over here. So those are the main outlets powering the server. I went ahead and plugged in my main computer or my main server to a backup outlet. I just, I just like, you know what? I don't want to risk it. I want to at least have one power supply running. Uh, so I have one running there. Another one's running to that UPS down there. And then one to each outlet or something like that. I had them spread around, but I just, you know, that's the way I have it set up right now. So. Let's do it. After I do this, it's going to be like, throw the phone down and just quickly get everything changed out. But let's check it out. Ooh. Apparently drawing uh, 1800 watts. I got 2.8 hours of runtime, I think. 99.4%. Sweet. Good to go. Easy peasy. No explode easy. Little DIY fry right here, but so far I haven't gotten any sparks. So I'm feeling pretty good. Only took me down to 98.7%. Definitely got good power back up. And I got, I got another set of batteries to add too. So that's exciting. Everything's working again. I'm not even, I'm not even dealing with this. And uh, the major reason is because the part of this entire like thing, I mean, aside from the generator input is that I will be running this hundred amp 
up and over into this. And then, because I'm going to want my server rack to have the backup battery power, ultimately, uh, this circuit breaker is going to move over there. So that is uh, square D, and I'm going to end up rerouting it anyway. So, you know, that's like why go through the effort of, of organizing that, because I'm just gonna change it anyways. But that is a project for another day, continuation, mainly because I have to plan out where this is gonna go up through. Like, I have to cut the access port. Uh, I got my little thing right there. It's gonna be the access port for the 100 amp. And then I have to figure out, um, like, exactly how I'm gonna get it through here. So, you know, maybe a couple of them, right? It's gonna be running through here, through the side. That's gonna allow some of those to go over there because I don't really wanna rewire all of them. Uh, although that's not a terrible idea because they're all right there. I can just pull them down and through, the, I don't know. Uh, more planning is needed. I'm a little worried that this part right here is gonna take a while because even though I can get things wired and switched over, oh, I guess it won't. If I get with things wired and switched over, the whole thing about this is hooking this up to my inverter. That way it would not only power my server rack, but then it would also power things like, you know, the bedroom lights or the living room lights, the garage lights, the garage door openers, the sump pumps, stuff like that. Circuits that I choose to run off this that would run through the battery in the case of a power outage. Uh, the generator hookup being something that I can hook up that 9,500 watt, plug that or pl like plug that in outside, start the generator, be like, yo, my batteries are only going to last me like a couple hours. You know, I need to actually hook up a generator. Then, and only then, I would turn and plug that generator on and that would not only charge the batteries, but then it would power the rest of the house. Unless, I mean, not the stove, of course. There's some things not going to power, but I can turn those things off. Which, don't worry, I already have an interlock switch thing coming. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with an interlock, so like this doesn't need to be on. Let me turn that off. If you're not familiar with the uh, uh, generator interlock kit, it basically, it is a piece of metal. It comes down here. It'll stick right here, and it slides up and down. So in order to slide this up to allow this to be turned on, your main breaker has to be turned off. So that's just like a guarantee that you're not going to be like in a hurry or forget or whatever and you want to turn this on. You go to turn it on and you have your main line on and your power's down and next thing you know you're trying to back feed into the system and you could, you know, hurt linemen or short out your system or whatever. Just not a good thing at all. So the interlock kit just takes away that you know, brain fart moment and allows you to just be a lot safer. And since all of this is gonna be running the circuit separately, it won't actually affect any kind of back feeding no matter what I do. So, you know, that's kind of nice having that transfer switch separate. I'm really hoping that this paint that I use to paint the house is, well, for one, that's the right color. I think it is, but two, it's good. It's been sitting here for, oh geez, it's, it's been a couple years now. Oh geez, five years. I don't know how good five-year-old paint's gonna be, but let's find out. I do have a mixer though. Oh, that's not looking good. <sighs> that is bad. This is an actual paint mixer. So I figure if I run this for a while, should restore it, hopefully. I'm gonna two hand this. Honestly, it might not be like day one perfect or anything or as reliable, but that that mixed up perfectly, so. Confidence. We even need a whole bunch, so I'm just gonna go out there and paintbrush this thing. Running out of daylight, so here's before. Look at that. Obviously, there's some difference in coloration. It's gotta dry, but uh, I left all the markings over there, but can't see them. Painted everything, blends right in. Almost wanted to paint the cox box, but you know, whatever. Actually, no. Well, no. Just kidding, I painted that too. Why the hell not? So in closing of this video before I leave, uh, the things that came with this generator that I purchased, yeah, that's the, th I need to fix that. Um, so I have a couple different locking plugs, which, <laughs> that is, wow, that just kind of does that. That's weird. Anyways, 
I, I, this is not gonna help me out, um, at least not for my needs right now. So what I have to do is I have to get on eBay and I have to get a cable, uh, an actual generator cable, RV hookup cable, and I need to get that ordered and figure out how long I want it. I think they're like $200, so that's gonna kinda suck, but in order to actually test it out, I'm either gonna have to buy this plug, make my own cable, which is sketch, anyway and i don't have the right cable or just buy the freaking plug plug so this is the stuff that came with it you know just generator stuff give me some plug-ins 20 amp yeah see that so none of this is actually going to help me do the testing to make sure i can actually use my generator yet so gonna have to order a cable well, hey guys that is the conclusion of diy fry i have so far not fried anything um you know all of this was a uh, professionally um, over saw by a professional. His name is Brandon. He didn't want to be on camera. So don't do what I do. Uh, always seek professional services when doing things like this. I'm just showing you the polished. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe below and have yourself a great day.